Did you know they've reached the limit of physics with graphics cards? Yeah, yeah. Computers have been pretty much like running up against the um, the upper limit of what you can physically do with our technology for for a little while now. We've, we're just getting closer and closer, basically. Like we're 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 pushing that line a little further, reaching the uh, limits with what one electron can do. We still have better chips from different materials. I think the real advancements are going to be in the math that we use to do uh, like big CPU and GPU calculations, right? Because we may be running up on limits when it comes to like physically how small we can make the circuitry. Uh, but we could always advance like mathematical calculations when it comes to optimizing the use of the available processing power, I think. Right now we're going in the opposite direction where every game made by Western developers is like 400 gigabytes and it takes like the, the a NASA supercomputer to render graphics that could, if they were optimized better, probably be handled by like a 1060 or something. So we're going in the, we're going in the opposite direction right now, you know. GPUs advertise themselves as being the thing you need to run new game and, you know, big new games get like paid. The developers, there's a lot of like monetary incentive to push that bullshit. Processing power is cheaper than programmer hours. Kind of depends. I mean, if you're just making a game, like sometimes the optimization ups for modern games are so obvious that it's like they do it deliberately, you know, just make bigger motherboards. Yeah, we could just make computers larger. That's true. From what I know, the advancements now are just in using more thread cores. No, okay, I'm not saying that there are no advancements to be made. I'm just saying that I think more emphasis has to be put on, like, the tools necessary to... We all know the Yandere dev memes, right? Like, the five trillion, you know, like, uh, the f polygon uh, models or whatever. Uh, Garten of Bonbon. Bon. What, what was that thing? I remember. The f remote model, the drone remote, with 184,000 triangles. Checking every value, every frame is the best way to do things. True. Yeah. More efficient code is going to be a thing. In fact, I know you might hate it, Vosh, but ML and predictive AI actually help with it because AI generating a frame is more efficient than rendering a frame is. Uh, okay. Yeah. And like, a f st like smashing your cock and balls with a rock is cheaper than having a kid. W what is the, what, what's the relationship between those things? You know, did, did you know shooting yourself in the head is actually faster than getting a, a law degree? What, what's the relationship between these things? You are a reactionary about AI. I've been proven right by every new piece of information that has ever come out about every single thing that has ever happened that involves AI has proven me right on my feelings on AI. Here, case in point, you 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 wanna you wanna segue? Amazon's quote unquote automated just walk out service relied on low paid Indian workers manually adding items and making bills, not AI. So that Amazon Fresh service where you could put an item in a cart and it would auto ring up to your account and you could just leave with it without having to go through the process of going to a, a you know, a, the, the, the checkout or whatever. There are literally little cameras in the goddamn carts with Indian dudes on the other end, like manually double checking everything. There you go. This is misleading. It used AI, but needed Indians to help train it. Why do you think that's even remotely misleading? What, what, what about... What, what about that is misleading? Amazon is phasing out its just walk out technology from its checkout list grocery stores. While it was introduced as an automated checkout service, it has turned around, it's, it's turned out that around 1,000 low paid Indian workers were employed by Amazon to watch labeling videos of customers at Amazon Fresh stores to ensure accuracy in checkouts. The cashiers were just shifted off site and observed the consumers while they shopped. This is exactly what I mean about social democracy. How like the the image of wealth and opulence in the West is uh, is is a product of us displacing misery onto the uh, developing world. Rather than seeing a poor cashier who's not making enough to like pay rent in the city that you're getting your shopping done in, you know, you can just have like a video feed beaming it over to some poor in like guy in, in Delhi or whatever, and he's, you know, uh, and, and he's looking it over, you know, Ex externalize all the suffering and poverty. On its website, however, Amazon claimed that sensors, cameras, and deep learning tools sense what a consumer takes off the shelf. The company did not specify that it is employing a thousand India-based workers to watch and label videos of customers to ensure accurate bills. The information reported that 700 out of 1,000 just walk out sales required human reviewers as of 2022. Guys, seven out of 10 of their walkouts needed. Apparently AI meant always Indian. Yeah, I guess so, Jesus. This fell well short of Amazon's internal target of receiving less than 50 reviews for every thousand purchases. It's wild, man. It's the same as the link I sent. An AI fast food drive through is mostly just human workers in the Philippines. AI drive through customer Presto Automation touted its automatic ordering technology. 
by Willage, which he means Filipinos, and has clients at chains like Checkers and Del Taco. But new filings indicate human labor is powering a majority of orders. Offsite human workers are stepping in and completing over 70% of orders. Jesus Christ. Every single uh, thing Siri says is actually a recording of a voice actor. Yeah, Siri doesn't exist, okay? There's just one very overworked lady uh, who's uh, responding to everyone's uh, pings. AI being used by the IDF to comp uh, compile kill lists. Yeah. The only thing that AI is really useful for in situations like this, where you don't want human review, is uh, obfuscating uh, responsibility. Israel wants it because if they have an AI telling them that every single Palestinian child is actually like a Hamasling, that gives it credibility that would otherwise be just a transparently some IDF guy pointing at a kid and saying, kill, you know? Uh, the only purpose, the purpose of AI in these instances is to like, uh, you know, obliterate the the chain of like human accountability. Whereas the problem with any kind of AI or automatic uh, detection system for Amazon Fresh or this company is that, uh, as it turns out, companies actually don't really like the idea of having a system manage their, uh, you know, sales that isn't being overseen by humans, it turns out that having an automated process that's unreliable because it learns on the go, uh, and it's kind of a black box informationally, is actually a massive liability when it comes to the reliability of your sales, which is why so many people need to step in and complete these orders. Like, what happens if something goes wrong with the algorithm? Do they just lose millions in sales because they don't, like, they don't have any oversight? They can't go back and, like, double it up if they've been losing on this and on orders later. They're not backcharging people for stuff that happened in the past. At least, not past a certain point, right? It's a massive liability. I mean, Vosh, they don't really care if they lose millions since they make billions. No, they do care if they lose millions. And you can tell because they're hiring underpaid foreign workers to double check their shiny, fancy, you know, AI systems. I promise you, they care a lot. There's a pattern of AI solutions that actually end up being contractors working in countries with lower labor costs. And often the AI companies work hard to conceal this fact. An online shopping app called Nate, popular with influencers and content creators because they pay for ad buys, said it used AI to autofill customers' checkout details. What? Wait, like you you put stuff in your cart and it's just like, don't worry, we have your address and credit card info. What? Okay. But it was revealed that the company had hired workers in the Philippines to manually complete orders in a majority of cases. Other startups have similarly marketed human labor as being AI. Cool, 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 cool. Where is the appeal of this? I mean, it's like sci-fi futurist techno bullshit, right? It's just like a marketing pitch. You might as well be saying that your 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 diner is like staffed by robots because you've stuffed some like illegal immigrants into a big cardboard box that you've painted like a robot. It's just a but yeah, it's a buzzword that people freak out over. Also, keep in mind this like AI bullshit. A lot of this isn't actually about the customer; it's about the investor. Investors are subhuman. Uh, venture capitalists have four IQ. Uh, they have no idea what they're doing. Uh, they are they are beneath you in every conceivable moral and physiological sense. Uh, so if you market your startup as being AI powered, they will they will fire money at you from a cannon. It doesn't matter if the whole thing goes bust, right? It's like the dot com bubble. You know, as long as you make enough money to uh, fly out in a golden parachute, you're set. Bosh, I think you're missing the point. It's not that they want human staff. It's that dumb managers think, oh, we'll just use this hack to market test the idea, then we'll work the rest out later. Like the Uber guys genuinely thought self-driving taxis were a thing that could work out. Yeah, but that's not really, that's not really different. Like that, that's, that's the same thing that I'm saying. Yeah, they're idiot like investors and, and developers who just like throw AI out there with no prior testing or understanding of how it would work. Understanding that like the appeal of it is just the aesthetic or the promise. They get their investments, they get their, their accolades, and then they f dip because it doesn't matter, you know? What's the dot-com bubble? Uh, every idea that you can imagine, some guy made a website for it and said that this will be the next sliced bread, and they got a billion dollars in investment money, and then it turns out that nobody wanted the thing that they made the website for, and then a bunch of people went bankrupt, you know? People were out there making websites for like, do you want chewed gum? Not gum that you have to chew yourself, but gum that's already been chewed. And then they made an app and somebody invested $482 million in their San Francisco-based like startup location. And then they serviced like three customers in the greater Bay Area. Uh, and, and then the whole thing like collapsed, you know, and, and, and the person who started the project ended up very, very, very wealthy. That does sound like it would save a lot of time. Waterproof teabag salesman. Yeah. You could have just said it was the 90s version of NFTs. I mean, kind of, to an extent. It's always been the same people. Anything anything that um, 
Silicon Valley venture capitalists are involved in. You know, anything in that ballpark, just evil, evil, all of it, worthless. You know, I have an amazing idea for a machine that squeezes your Capri Sun for you. You know, you make a joke, but that's honestly like not that far off. Have you ever seen those like really expensive $500 home juice making systems where there's like a whole machine? Yeah, the juice row. Yeah, 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 yeah. Still the greatest example of uh, Silicon Valley. Here, raised $120 million from investors. The company, which offered pre-sold packets of diced fruits and vegetables that users plugged into $400 machines, launched only 16 months ago. This is from 2017. So this wasn't even the dot-com startup. This was recent. This was like, this was like in the Trump era, basically. $120 million. The company's founder, Doug Evans, who compared himself to Steve Jobs, had previously bragged that the juice press wielded four tons of force, and in the face of embarrassing videos of the squeezing by hand, the company noted the machines were connected to the internet and could ensure users don't make juice with packets that have expired. $120 million. Making juice is easy. Start by taking a stroll down to the neighborhood farmer's market. Buy about $50 worth of organic fruits and vegetables. Don't forget to bring a tote bag. Do you sell tote bags? Don't forget to bring a tote bag, you know? Like, hey, infantile, 8 IQ, like, Bay Area, yuppie, millennial dipshit. Don't forget to bring a bag to the farmer's market. Uh, do you sell tote bags? Uh, do you, don't you hate it when this happens to you? No, we'll just carry it. Did we'll just, yeah, we'll just, we'll just carry, <laughs> this is, this is what investors in the Bay Area think life is like if you don't buy their product, okay? This, this is what they think life is like. Did you forget your tote? Wash your fruits and vegetables. Cut them. Chop them. Wash them again. Peel them. I think this peeler's broken. Dig your juicer out from the back of your cupboard. Realize there's still a part missing. Find it. <laughs> Figure out how to put it all together, then juice. And enjoy. Oh, but did you think you were done? Cause you're not. Now you've made a big old mess that you have to clean up, the machine, the countertop, pretty much your whole kitchen. You can get those beets out of anything. All right, so making juice isn't easy at all. Ah. It's actually Again, just a reminder to you, venture capitalists are not human. Actually a huge pain, but what if it didn't have to be? <laughs> um, goddamn monolith from 2000 to Space Odyssey. What is this? It's a juicero. I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know what that word means. What's it's a, a new word. Okay, define it for me. Uh, Juicero. Oh man, dude, this is some like, this is some like Michael, Sarah, Juno, uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world millennial writing right there. You, you, you feeling like, are you feeling the era this is from? Juicero, what, oh, what, 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 is, what is that? You'd let me, no, 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 let me know, yeah. That word means what's it's a juicero? New word. Okay, define it for me. Uh, juicero, the best juice ever. What comes out of the juicero is so fresh that it shouldn't even be called juice. It should just be called, I don't know, squashed produce. Is that better? Because that's what it is. Okay. Our founder, Doug, is straight up made of juice. Literally, there. So this is the guy who compared himself to Steve Jobs. He looks exactly the way you think he would. Also, this is a very normal thing to do in your like advertisement for a new product is to include your CEO and 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 fa like, you know, yeah, this is what I want for my juice press ad. The f lunatic megalomaniac who got $120 million to fail with it. There's juice in my veins. Doug and the Juicero team have taken care of everything. Not just the washing, the peeling, and the chopping, but the growing, the harvesting, the washing, the refrigerated transport, the inspecting. Did we mention the washing, the packaging, and finally- This is so environmentally efficient, man. Oh my god. This is so good. How much do you think one of these packs was? Like eight bucks or something? Ten? Delivering to your house. And we haven't even gotten to the most genius part yet. There's nothing to clean. No mess whatsoever. It's so easy that it makes the old way of juicing seem, well, old. Why did I do all that other stuff? Who cares? That's our past life. The crazy thing is, is that um, Juicero actually ended up being so much of a market failure. I think it's actually prevented other companies from making their own good, like, juicing devices, you know? Because most, like, fruit juice thingies kind of suck. I honestly think you could make a good one for like 40 bucks on some like Soviet era tech, you know what I mean? Like just 
really dig down to the basics and make like some indestructible titanium goddamn juicer, you know, that doesn't have to be washed that much. But now nobody wants to touch it because Juicero. The Juicero CEO moved on to selling raw water to people now. Oh, that's perfect. Advocating for an unprocessed water brand founded by a guy who claims tap water is meant to control your mind. Yep. Yep, that fits. Oh my god, the Juicero had a Whole Foods partnership? I knew my hatred of Whole Foods was warranted. He took a fancy to a brand called Live Water that can sell for around $6 a gallon, reportedly using the naturally sourced product for a 10-day cleanse shortly after the Juicero downfall. Call me a conspiracy theorist, but chloramine and fluoride are mind-altering drugs that have no benefit to our dental health. Yep, this tracks. Guys, this venture capitalists gave this man $120 million. About one, what, eighth of a billion? Ninth? One ninth of a billion? Something. An amount of money. They're not human. Just found this article. People found that you cannot squeeze the juice packs with their hands without paying 400 for the machine, so the CEO had to beg them to stop. Juicero CEO begs you, do not squeeze our juice bags. Okay, look, we gotta move on. L listen, okay? The story... The, listen, okay, the, the point of all of this is that if you think that AI is useful for literally anything, you would have had, you would have invested in Juicero, you would have bought Juicero, you would still be defending Juicero, okay? These are the same thing, and it is you. You are that. What's the actual best juice option for your money? Like, if you want to make juice? I don't really, I've never, like, made juice at home. I've made uh, smoothies. If you just get like a big bag of frozen like strawberries or um, banana, not a bag of banana, just like get bananas or whatever. Like you, you can just any of that crap, you know, just toss it in a um, in a blender. You're good. Yeah, just get a blender and some frozen fruit. Fruit. Yeah, smoothies are better for you. I ge I genuinely think that like if you make a habit of having one real smoothie a day, even like three or four a week, you're probably gonna live a lot longer than your average American would otherwise. You know. Most people don't get their daily recommended fruits and vegetables, but one smoothie is like an impossibly healthy shot of all that good good, you know? Oh, and some Greek yogurt, because you don't want it to all be fruit, right? You want something to smooth it out, yeah. Yeah, some frozen strawberries, some sliced up bananas. Um, oh, gotta have some citrus. You're not having a fruit smoothie without any goddamn citrus, are you? Get some, some orange, uh, some peeled orange slices in there, you know? Get them in there. Get... Get them in there. Apples. Uh, well, okay, maybe you could do apples. I'm saying citrus, you know, get that in there. Gra grapefruit, you know. Okay, a bunch of lime juice. Vroom. Don't you have don't you have lime juice for your cocktails? You know, your 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 margaritas? Don't you have some? Come on, toss them in, you know? Just to toss whole lemons in there. F it. Just woo, woo, you know, whatever. I'm interested in having smoothies, but I don't want to spend two hundred in a blender. Blenders aren't that expensive. I haven't bought a new one in I'm using the one that I had like in college. You can get that. I'm seeing blenders for like 25 bucks. Okay, the 25 buck ones are probably shit. Maybe, maybe like a good one, Black and Decker for 50. It's Black and Decker. That's probably fine, right? Yeah, 50. It's, it's okay. Black and Decker are shit, but they work. Yeah, yeah. Like if nothing else, I figure it's going to work, right? Get one at Goodwill. Yeah, that's true. Get an immersion blender. What about, um, can you make a smoothie in a food processor or would a food processor dice it up too much? Would, would a food processor, um, W w would that, like, overdo it? Because they tend to be faster, right? Or are they, like, the same? Is a food processor just the same as a blender, except, like, shape different? Food processors don't have enough volume? Um, I guess you're right, yeah. Yeah, they tend to be smaller. A food processor is more like dicing up, like, nuts or something. I don't know. I don't think it would blend it right. Yeah, maybe not. Be, like, too fast, too small. We'll just use a blender. Is there such a thing as blending a smoothie too much? Uh, yeah, because if you do it too much, you can kind of, like, froth it, right? Because you, if you don't want to introduce too much air to it, uh, well, I guess, maybe if you want to, I, I guess, it's not going to, like, ruin anything, but it would, I wouldn't like that. I like a, a really dense, uh, smoothie. I like them frothy, but frothy is better. Okay, fine. You know, are smoothies good for you? Yes, obviously. How could they not be? Like, a smoothie that you make out of frozen fruit, fruit is literally just frozen fruit like that's the only thing the only things in a smoothie like you're it's frozen fruit and it's some greek yogurt add some yogurt you know like how could that not be healthy it has to be it's what 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 chemical process could could keep that for me healthy you know um i'm lactose intolerant eh whatever smoothies can have too much sugar but i'm literally describing just eating fruit 
Like, I'm sure it's fine. Would you really trust a drink made by a machine? Mmm, you're right. And isn't, isn't using a blender to make your food a little bit like AI, right? Because you're like, you're touching it, you're hitting a button, sure. But the it's generative because it generates the smoothie, right? And it's kind of like a black box because the smoothie is, is kind of like a box. You put stuff in it, you know, it's normally transparent, but the black box thing is more like a metaphorical, right? Uh, you know, so it's 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 a little bit like generative AI. You're right. Yeah, there, there's a there's a Filipino guy like looking at a camera feed pointed at the inside of the blender, trying to make sure everything gets mixed properly. He's spitting on a bike. That's a Filipino guy under your kitchen counter, furiously pedaling. God damn it! Tech companies are going to uh, advertise free unlimited energy to every household in America, and it will just be like an Indian guy in a small box under your house that's always pedaling. You know. <laughs>